My name is Jessica Chapman and I'm with the City of Greenville's Environmental Engineering Bureau and today we're going to be talking about how to install a rain barrel. This is a rain station 45 which is a 45 gallon drum for holding rainwater. And since we're the Environmental Bureau, it's very important to us that we recycle material as much as possible. So you can see that this, this product is actually made of 85% recycled material. That's why it is a black rain barrel. So I've actually never installed a rain barrel. This will be my first rain barrel installation experience. And we're doing this so that you can see how easy it is that you too can harvest rainwater at your own home. So this is exactly what a rain barrel would like, look like when it comes to your home. It would come with the lid and the base and everything to install it is inside pretty much. Inside you'll find both directions, which is one of my favorite things to use because <laughs> I find that it's often needed for proper installation, as well as all the material to convert your barrel into a rain barrel. You'll see that you have a flexible diverter hose for connecting into your downspout so that you have some variability in where you're actually going to place your rain barrel. You'll have your spigot to connect into your rain barrel. And this is the downspout diverter which allows water to enter into your rain barrel through this chamber here. And when the rain barrel is full, the water will bypass through the hole rather than overflowing your rain barrel. Your rain barrel is supplied with the hole saws needed in order to drill a hole into your rain barrel as well as drill the hole into your downspout. There is actually a series of two saws that are provided one inside the other and you just unwind the back and use whichever saw is needed at that particular time. There are a series of gaskets to make your rain barrel watertight so that water does not exit your rain barrel when it shouldn't. This is the winterizing cap. This cap is used to place on your downspout during the winter time so that your rain barrel does not get filled with water and accidentally freeze and cause cracking. This is an important element to utilize during the winter months. The rain barrel also comes with a slotted piece that allows you to use the rain barrel as also a planter to make it more aesthetically pleasing. You simply take your lid and you flip your lid over and you push this gasket out that's shown in the center and you place the slotted piece straight in so then you could soil and plant above which we'll be doing later. Now that we've looked at the parts that come with the rain barrel, let's look at assembling the rain barrel itself. We talked before about the gaskets that come with the rain barrel that prevent the water from exiting the rain barrel the two smaller gaskets would be placed into the two smaller holes. Sometimes this can be quite difficult to do. So what we're gonna to do to make it just a little bit easier is take a little bit of hand soap and put hand soap around the edge of the gasket just so it slides in a little easier. You can obviously rinse this off when you're done with the installation. We will then be installing the second gasket with the same method, taking a little bit of hand soap putting that hand soap around the outside of the gasket and then inserting the gasket into the drum. You can take a little hammer and tap it once you're almost in to help you. Now that both watertight gaskets are in, you're going to want to install the spigot, which comes also with the rain barrel and just simply screw it in. making sure that it's tight. And the reason that you have a plastic, plastic spigot instead of a metal spigot is because that plastic adheres better to plastic versus metal. Then you have your overflow or something that you can attach a soaker hose to once installation is complete that you go ahead and screw into the bottom hole. Now that we have our spigot and our diverter installed, we need to figure out where we're going to drill our hole. There are two places provided to pre-drill holes for inserting the tube that we looked at earlier. So that's going to be dependent on where you place your rain barrel. Well, you need to determine where you're going to place your rain barrel carefully. You need to make sure that it's in a location that has a flat surface 
Here we've put a couple concrete blocks in to create that flat surface. Not only does the surface need to be flat so that the rain barrel doesn't tip over, it also needs to be elevated at a good enough height so that when you turn on your water that the water will flow out and not sit in the container. So let's take a look how this rain barrel looks on the surface we've created. You can see that it's nice and stable and we've only had to elevate the rain barrel approximately six inches because the land itself on this particular home has a good slope to the rear of the yard where we intend to actually water. You could also raise it as much as two feet and with that you may want to use a rain barrel stand which you would typically make out of four by fours and plywood. So now that we have our rain barrel in place we need to determine which hole would be the ideal at the rear of the rain barrel to drill into to insert the downspout diverter. With the location as you see it now and knowing that we're planning on having the spigot face forward we're going to go ahead and drill into this hole shown on the rear back of the rain barrel. I'm a little intimidated as you may be as well but again this is supposed to be an easy process so we're going to go ahead and take our hole saw that came with the rain barrel and place the drill bit into the hole saw and screw the nut onto the back side. You go ahead and place it into the drill and make sure that it's locked down tight. And they give you a pilot hole to go ahead and line up your drill bit. So we're gonna line up our drill bit and hold steady, making sure that your rain barrel's not gonna move. I'm gonna go ahead and anchor it with my leg. And we've gotten our first hole drilled successfully. But we're going to need the next gasket. And this is the gasket that connects again the downspout to the rain barrel. This is the larger of the gaskets. And again, it makes it a little easier to go ahead and use a little bit of liquid dishwashing soap to allow the gasket to slide in. and that seems to be installed successfully. Now the second hole that you see here, you can drill as well if you want to use that as an overflow, but it also gives the opportunity for mosquitoes and other things to enter into the rain barrel. So only use this hole if you plan on actually using it as a diverter. Now that we have our rain barrel set, again, we want to make sure that it's fairly level so that when it's filled up with water, that it does not tend to tip over. And you can see here that the rain barrel is level. So once you've determined that it's level, you'll go ahead and you want to take that level and you're going to mark where the top of this barrel sets. So we're going to go ahead and take our pencil. You'll then take your level and place it on the top of your rain barrel next to your downspout and make a line at the top side of your rain barrel. This is your reference line to know how far to measure down to install our downspout diverter. I'm going to go ahead and move the rain barrel so you can see where this mark is located on the downspout. Now that we have that mark, I'm going to take my measuring tape. I'm going to measure two inches down from that line and make another mark. Now that we have that next mark, we need to determine the width of the downspout so we know exactly where the center of that line is for drilling purposes. So you can see that it's a three inch downspout. So at an inch and a half, we are at center. That spark marks where we want to go ahead and drill for our downspout diverter. We're going to go ahead and take the larger drill bit that's also again provided with the rain barrel and attach it to our drill. Remember always to use your safety glasses because we are drilling into metal and we don't want to have any problems. Again, you're going to line up at the center of your mark. So we're going to go ahead and start. You see that you start off with a small pilot hole, and this is to make sure that you stay on your mark. You can see that we're approximately where our mark was located, and we're going to continue drilling. We now have our hole. We're going to go ahead and connect our downspout diverter. You want to make sure that this 
side is facing up so that the water enters into your rain barrel. Pinch both sides. Again, beware of sharp edges and go ahead and insert thy diverter into the downspout. Once you have it fully inserted, you can go ahead and drill holes into the top and bottom at the pre-drilled locations to anchor in the downspout diverter. To anchor the downspout diverter, you can either use a Phillips screwdriver or you can go ahead and take a Phillips screw tip and insert it into your electric screwdriver. These screws come as well with the rain barrel. And again, there's the pre-drilled holes and you just go ahead and insert it in. That now is securely anchored. It's now time to install our rain barrel to our downspout. We are now looking at the rain barrel from the opposite side. Again, this was the downspout diverter that we just installed a moment ago. And this is the hole that we drilled into our rain barrel for connecting to our downspout. We're gonna go ahead and modify the flexible diverter as necessary in order to line the holes up. You just simply push one into the other Once you have a good solid connection, it should be good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fill the rain barrel with a little water to start so that if there's a large wind, the rain barrel doesn't knock over prior to receiving rainwater. That's what we'll go ahead and do next. Once we've got the rain barrel filled to just about the bottom spigot, we'll go ahead and stop filling the rain barrel. It's good and stable now and shouldn't blow over during a storm event prior to getting filled with water. This is about the same amount of water that will always remain in the rain barrel at the bottom of the rain barrel due to the location of the exit points. Here's the lid that we previously modified in order to place plantings in the top of the rain barrel. If you choose not to place plantings in the top of the rain barrel, you're gonna wanna go ahead and take your rain barrel lid and place it on the top of your rain barrel Make sure that it's fully on and there are holes at a couple locations that you will see on the rain barrel lid in order to screw in and anchor your rain barrel lid so that it does not blow off during rain events. But again, we're going to go ahead and plant our rain barrel lid. So we're going to turn it over and face it up and we're going to place some soil in the bottom or in the bottom of the lid and then from there we're going to add some plantings. We'll go ahead and do that now. I went ahead and planted the flowers of our choice in this rain barrel to go ahead and just make it a little prettier to dress up the side of the house. So this is the completed product. So the next time it rains, it's gonna go ahead and fill up and you can use it at your leisure to either connect a soaker hose to and water your garden or connect a traditional hose to the upper spigot and water your garden. Again, the upper spigot is for a traditional hose and the lower spigot would be more for a soaker hose. Thank you so much, and I hope you've enjoyed this rain barrel installation as much as I have, and we'll implement rainwater harvesting in your house in the city of Greenville.